So Dr. Schultz, today we're talking about digital rectal exams. I know this is an extremely common practice within men in urology. There are millions of men getting it every year. So I thought we would cover what it is and with the latest technologies that have come out in prostate cancer, do people still need to get these exams? Probably yes. The uh, PSA is a much better screening test than the digital rectal. The digital rectal was around before PSA existed and a lot of prostate cancer snuck through that didn't get detected. Uh, so it's not a very uh, precise test at all. But there are certain variants of prostate cancer that don't make much PSA and those variants tend to be the more dangerous variants. And it is possible to pick up consequential prostate cancers with a digital rectal exam uh, and still have a normal PSA. Now, PSA will probably be up a little bit uh, if you're you know, dealing with a youngster, say, in their early 50s, and they have a PSA of 3, that's actually suspicious in a 50-year-old. But it would not register on the test as being abnormal because many of the upper limit of normal thresholds is around 4. The digital rectal, however, could detect a palpable abnormality and as we know, the earlier we find these things, the better. So when should men start getting digital rectal exams? Same time they start getting PSAs, and there's a little controversy about that. Some say start at age 40, some say start at age 50. They tend to uh, say, well, if you're African American or have a family history, start at an earlier age. Uh, I think it's reasonable to start at age 40. These are simple things to do. You perhaps don't need a test every single year at age 40, but between say 40 and 45, maybe every other year, get a checkup, get a PSA, get a digital rectal exam. So when a doctor performs a digital rectal exam, they can only feel one side of the prostate. So does prostate cancer grow on one side more than another? It certainly does. So that's one reason that it can be useful is that uh, more often than not, the prostate cancer is on the side of the gland that you can feel through the rectal wall. So it's a useful test. Uh, it's uh, interesting that it uh, can be used even when we started giving hormone therapy to early stage prostate cancer more than 20 years ago. We quickly noted that when men would get a Lupron shot that their palpable disease would disappear within two to three months. And uh, this contradicted the general false thinking out there that hormone therapy only causes the disease to stop growing. That's certainly not true. That hormone therapy is very powerful and it will kill off 99.9% .9 of the cancer cells, not 100%, and that's why people still need radiation. But the uh, digital rectal exam response, that is where nodules from known cancer would disappear uh, with just a few months of hormone therapies where we learned how powerful uh, hormone treatment could be in early stage prostate cancer. So are digital rectal exams good for estimating the size of the prostate? Not bad. Uh, an experienced doctor can give us a general sense of how big the prostate is. It's not nearly as accurate as an MRI or an ultrasound. And as you well know, the context uh, for interpreting PSA is always in the context of uh, in relation to how big the prostate gland is. So if a man has a large prostate, a 100 cc prostate, a normal PSA for that individual, you divide the prostate volume by 10, is around 10. So 100 into 10 is 10. And uh, if you have a 50 cc gland, uh, which can be estimated with a dig digital rectal exam, more or less, and uh, then a normal PSA would be around five. So uh, the uh, problem with men with big prostates getting unnecessary biopsies because just because their PSA is up a little bit is really sad. These individuals should be um, referred for uh, scanning with MRI to find out if they have cancer, not, not undergo these random biopsies that have been so popular over the last 30 years. So if we have like three T MRIs that are so good at detecting, you know, early stage prostate cancer, why are we not just doing MRIs instead of DREs and screening? Well, you could argue that the MRI, uh, which is far more accurate than a digital rectal, you know, makes the digital rectal exam superfluous, that we don't, we no longer need it. Um, that's certainly, I would say, probably true. Uh, however, MRIs are expensive, they're cumbersome, they're a little uncomfortable. Uh, digital rectal exam can, can be performed very quickly and easily in a doctor's office. And uh, this is usually being done in a perfectly healthy person who's undergoing PSA screening who, uh, during his annual physical exam, 
listen to the heart and the lungs, feel the prostate. All this is sort of a routine process just to make sure we're not missing something. Once somebody has been diagnosed with prostate cancer, maybe they've had imaging, is there ever a need for a digital rectal exam after that? Well, we tell patients who've undergone radiation and perhaps who perhaps have been cured that they should have periodic digital rectal exams because in theory there's a possibility of secondary rectal cancers from the radiation down the line. I've only seen one case of that in my whole career and with modern radiation it's very rare. But again, it's a simple test and it's just a way to double check that nothing is being missed. So some men may be very opposed to having a digital rectal exam and may only want to do the PSA test. How dangerous is that? Not very dangerous. Uh, the digital rectal exam will diagnose prostate cancer at an earlier stage in low PSA producing patients. But the uh, PSA will eventually start to rise in everybody, even with the low PSA producers. I think if people are very vigilant and watch the PSA closely and use it to its maximum ability, that the chances of uh, missing something that would only be picked up on a digital rectal exam is pretty small. It's not zero. I mean, there will be people that would be have benefited, but some men are really put off by digital rectal exams. And if it's going to keep them out of the doctor's office altogether, and if they end up foregoing PSA testing because they're afraid of digital rectal exams, then I would just do the PSA. It's such a valuable blood test. I would hate to drive people away because they're afraid of having a digital rectal exam. Most men aren't squeamish about it, but some are, and uh, I understand that. And if they have to make a choice, I would certainly just do the PSA. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because I think oftentimes people are very squeamish about it and we get them on helpline, do I have to go through this? But the PSA is really powerful. You mentioned the concept of you know getting it checked regularly and using it properly. So can you expound on that a little bit? Well, if you use the same laboratory every time, if you, um, abstain from sexual activity the day before. If the doctor, having done a digital rectal exam in the past, has a sense of how big the prostate is, um, the age of the patient, all these things give you an idea of what kind of a PSA you would expect. And if it's a little higher than what you're comfortable with, there's a lot of other secondary blood tests like OPCO 4K, Select MDX, XODX, uh, these blood and urine tests that are even more accurate than PSA. So. I think that uh, PSA is an incredibly valuable tool, and if it's uh, watched on an annual basis, then you have a baseline to compare it to. So if something starts to go up, uh, there are other non-invasive things that can be done, ultimately, of course, an MRI. There is a proper way to do PSA screening and uh, to, to extract the maximum accuracy out of the test. And if it's done accurately, then I think that uh, people will catch the cancer at the earliest and most curable stage. Today we talked about digital rectal exams, also known as DREs. I think one thing I hope that everybody does is encourage your friends to go get screened for prostate cancer, whether that's using a DRE or using the PSA test. And as you heard Dr. Scholl say, if somebody's really squeamish about getting a digital rectal exam, they can get just the PSA, and at least it's better than nothing, and actually the PSA can help a lot. I think the important thing here is all of the cure rates and the remission rates and the treatments that we're talking about being effective are really based on catching prostate cancer early. In fact, all the survival rates are based off of that. It doesn't mean if you didn't catch it early that you won't have good success. Every prostate cancer is unique, but it is really important to make sure that we're encouraging our friends, our family, and even yourself to go out there and get checked. If you would like more information about prostate cancer screening or have specific questions about digital rectal exams, you can visit our website at pcri.org and contact our helpline. You can talk to a live person and have your questions answered. If there are topics or questions that you have, you can also leave them in the comment section below this video. We are a 501c3 nonprofit and we focus completely on trying to answer as many of your questions as we can. Please visit our website, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we come out with new prostate cancer videos every week and much love. Thank you for trusting us. You're not alone. I hope you know that. Thank you.